Welcome to the Eastern Civ Podcast at the Historian's Eye. Please subscribe, and if you'd like to be notified when new episodes are released, click the bell icon. Confucius was a Chinese teacher, editor, politician, and philosopher of the spring and autumn period of Chinese history. The philosophy of Confucius emphasized personal and governmental morality, correctness of social relationships, justice, and sincerity. His followers competed successfully with the many other schools during the Hundred Schools of Thought era, only to be suppressed in favor of the legalists during the Qin Dynasty. Following the victory of the Han over Chu after the collapse of the Qin, Confucius's thought received official sanction and was further developed into a system known in the West as Confucianism. Confucius is traditionally credited with having authored or edited many of the Chinese classics, including the Five Classics. But modern scholars are cautious of attributing specific assertions to Confucius himself. Aphorisms concerning his teachings were compiled in the Analects, but only many years after his death. Confucius's principles had a basis in common Chinese tradition and belief. He championed strong family loyalty, ancestor veneration, and respect of elders by their children and of husbands by their wives. He also recommended family as a basis for ideal government. He espoused the well-known principle, do not do unto others what you would not want done to yourself. Confucius is also a traditional deity in Taoism. It is generally thought that Confucius was born on September 28, 551 BC. His birthplace was in Zhao, Lu State, present-day Kufu, Shangdong Province. His father, Kang He, also known as Shuanglong He, was an officer in the Lu military. Kang died when Confucius was three years old, and Confucius was raised by his mother, Yang Jingjia. His mother would later die at less than 40 years of age. At age 19, he married his wife, Kui Guan, and a year later the couple had their first child, Kang Li. They would later have two daughters, one of whom was thought to have died early in life as a child. Confucius was educated at schools for commoners, where he studied and learned the six arts. Confucius was born in the class of Xi, between the aristocracy and the common people. He is said to have worked in various governmental jobs during his early 20s and also worked as a bookkeeper and caretaker of sheep and horses. In the year 501 BC, Confucius was appointed to a minor position as governor of a town. Eventually, he rose to the position of minister of crime. Although Confucianism is often followed in a religious manner by the Chinese, many argue that its values are secular and that it is therefore less a religion than a secular morality. Proponents argue, however, that despite the secular nature of Confucianism's teachings, it is based on a worldview that is religious. Confucianism discusses elements of the afterlife and views concerning heaven, but it is relatively unconcerned with some spiritual matters often considered essential to religious thought, such as the nature of souls. However, Confucius is said to have believed in astrology, saying, Heaven sends down its good or evil symbols, and wise men act accordingly. In the Analects, Confucius presents himself as a, quote, transmitter who invented nothing, end quote. He puts the greatest emphasis on the importance of study, and it is the Chinese characters for study that opens the text. Far from trying to build a systematic or formalistic theory, he wanted his disciples to master and internalize older, older classics so that their deep thought and thorough study would allow them to relate the moral problems of the present to the past. One of the deepest teachings of Confucius may have been the superiority of personal exemplification over explicit rules of behavior. His moral teachings emphasize self-cultivation, emulation of moral exemplars, and the attainment of skilled judgment rather than knowledge of rules. Confucian ethics may therefore be considered a type of virtue ethics. His teachings rarely rely on seasoned arguments and ethical ideals, and methods are conveyed more indirectly through illusion, innuendo, and even tautology. His teachings require examination and context in order to be understood. Confucius's political thought is based on his ethical thought. He argued that the best government is one that rules through rights and people's natural morality, not by using bribery and coercion. He explained this in one of the most important analects, quote, If the people be led by laws and uniformity sought to be given them by punishments, they will try to avoid the punishment, but have no sense of shame. 
if they be led by virtue and uniformity sought to be given them by the rules of propriety, they will have the sense of shame and moreover will become good. Confucius did not believe in the concept of democracy, which is itself an Athenian concept unknown to ancient China, but could be interpreted by Confucius's principles recommending against individuals electing their own political leaders to govern them, or that anyone is capable of self-government. He expressed fears that the masses lacked the intellect to make decisions for themselves, and that in his view, since not everyone is created equal, not everyone has the right to self-government. While he supported the idea of government ruling by a virtuous king, his ideals contained a number of elements to limit the power of rulers. He argued for representing truth and language and honesty was of paramount importance. Even in facial expression, truth must always be represented. Confucius believed that if a ruler were to lead correctly by action, orders would be deemed unnecessary and that others will follow the proper action of their ruler. In discussing the relationship between a king and his subject, or a father and his son, he underlined the need to give respect to superiors. This demanded that the subordinate must give advice to the superiors if the superiors were considered to be taking the course of action that was wrong. Confucius believed in ruling by example. If you lead correctly, orders by force or punishment aren't necessary.